Hello everyone, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV uh, and welcome to the new series of uh, how to bypass the application firewall. So in this series, we're gonna uh, I'm gonna divide into multiple sessions. The first episode, we're gonna talk about what is the WAF and, and at the high level, how do we like, you know, what are the techniques you can bypass? The second session, we're gonna look at like, you know, some, some interesting methods and some uh, like, you know, the fuzzing techniques and the third, third and fourth session onwards, we'll, we'll see some demo as well. So make sure uh, you hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button if you haven't already. Uh, let's dig into this. So web application firewall, uh, this is not a new concept. You must all have heard about the firewall, which is a network layer defense. Web application firewall is more like a layer seven defense sort of like you know application layer defense and and nowadays like with the cloud computing and uh, cloud infrastructure is so so popular uh, all the major providers such as aws azure and gcp do have their own application firewall solution and and from my personal perspective and and i would obviously recommend to all of you uh, whoever is like you know uh, working in the product security or as a pen tester or or you have a team to support I would definitely recommend to at least have application firewall as one of the control in your application uh, it actually it's not the primary control however it's one of the most critical control you could ever have uh, in your application so definitely do that so now since web application firewall is so popular right and and every every cloud provider and and there are just so many options out there uh, like a cloud front which is very very famous as well uh, with so many options out there uh, we as a pen tester you have to know uh, it's not like if there is a WAF you cannot exploit certain vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting cross-site request forgery injection CS uh, uh, LFI uh, server-side template injection stuff like that there is always bypassable technique because uh, the WAF uh, of course the the client or, or the end user has to uh, configure the rules accordingly but as well as you uh, like you know not all the firewalls have uh, be checking because it's it's very tricky because sometimes if you configure too tight then you might be blocking the expected traffic that's why there is no uh, I, I would say like you know good balance uh, you have to strike a good balance between the usability and the defense and that's when the balance is not there uh, there is a way for the pen testers to bypass this uh, so as simple like if if you don't know what is the WAF or, or how does it work so it's simple uh, the end user coming from the internet uh, like you know and here are web servers the firewall will be sitting in front of it and every traffic will go back and forth between the firewall and and you, like you know, it will inspect the traffic it will drop the traffic or it will give sub, sub, uh, like you know appropriate responses to the end user based on the request they have sent that is what the that is what the firewall is now as i said like waf alone uh, web application firewall alone is not a sufficient control it's a secondary control um, uh, you can always bypass the waf and that's what we're going to learn throughout the series how to buy, how to do that uh, so as a, as a pen tester, as a security consultant, your focus should always be uh, defense in depth. You always recommend to the developers that yeah, they must implement some controls in the application uh, to defend against vulnerabilities like OAS top 10 uh, rather than just relying on the WAF because there is no guarantee that the WAF will operate at, at its 100%. So whenever you are doing a penetration testing, uh, this is my again advice: ask the ask uh, the like you know engagement owner that uh, or the development team to disable the WAF or disable this protection for you. And the reason I would say that uh, because the pen test is like time bounded activity, right? Uh, you don't have uh, let's say 30 month or years to uh, perform the pen test. It's like seven days. 20 days 30 days 40 days whatever now in those 40 days your focus should be checking the application control whether uh, like you know the libraries that's used by the application developers or the one that they have developed are secure or not rather than checking whether WAF is blocking the traffic or not that's like you know uh, WAF providers or builders already does that so we don't need to repeat the work 
However, if you are doing the rat teaming activity, yeah, then it makes sense that like uh, they will not disable the WAF and, and you can test the WAF bypass. Uh, but uh, imagine like you know someone on the internet uh, has ample amount of time to bypass the WAF and, and if you don't have any control in the application to prevent again for example cross-site scripting then once they've bypassed the WAF then they can easily exploit and while pen testing if you do not disable the WAF then you might not be able to discover that vulnerability in that 15 or 7 days engagement so I always recommend to uh, request for disabling the WAF for so and so reason and I'm, I'm sure like, you know, uh, if you want to get most out of this engagement, then then uh, WAF should not block you uh, from performing the pen testing. Um, so now the first thing is we need to detect. So when you are doing the pen testing, right, like the first phase is the information gathering and recon. So in the detection, you need to you need to find out, OK, how, how do you detect whether they are using the WAF or not? Of course, you can have the information gather, uh, like, you know, you can you can do all the fuzzing and, and you can see based on the response. Sometimes you might detect, okay, whether there is in WAF or not. Uh, second, you can obviously ask the developer right away, like how the infrastructure is set up and based on that, you can see whether the WAF is enabled. And there are mostly, uh, like, you know, uh, the most of the WAF is based on the mode security, which is very popular. Uh, even, I think even the AWS WAF. So uh, you would know based on like you know certain responses whether the this response is coming from the mode security type of WAF or not. So th those are like you know several ways you can detect whether the uh, WAF is there or not. Uh, then you can do the fingerprinting. Uh, the fingerprinting technique is uh, one thing. It, it the application might be using WAF, but they are, might be also using some filtering. Uh, and when I say filtering, it means like uh, like you know the libraries that they use like for example csrf guard uh, to prevent the cross uh, cross site request forgery rather than uh, having waf protect them right so they might be using filtering and not the waf so you want to make sure like what because if they're using filtering then you cannot ask them to disable it but you can certainly uh, try to bypass it or look for vulnerabilities and exploits on the internet uh, second thing is uh, they might be using some allow listing and block listing uh, uh, just to be inclusive rather than calling white listing and black listing. So uh, that way also uh, like you know the, this is very tricky because allow listing is always better than the block listing. However, sometimes uh, like you know if, if that is not configured correctly, it might allow you to um, like you know bypass by using certain uh, script tag like a capital S rather than small s and which is not allow listed or etc so that that you need to figure it out and and how do you do that uh, there is there is multiple way you can observe the response then you can uh, gather the information from the errors that you receive from the application by fuzzing and then lastly, you first the different things, you first the methods, you first the content types, uh, user agent, uh, different methods, parameters, values, etc., etc. Right? That that we will learn in the detail uh, in in the detail uh, within this series. So first thing, uh, response code fingerprinting. Uh, so uh, uh, usually when I test something, I would say like you know 200, 400 or 404 that's like a normal request because if something is not found something is bad or 200 where is a normal response when but whenever you see something like 4 403 500 that's a not normal like forbidden is something that you're trying to access something and you're not authorized okay that's fine but if you're trying to something and and like you know the mode security or the WAF comes back as like forbidden then that's like oh there's a WAF or, or some, something is blocking us 500 will always give you some internal error messages which can obviously helpful uh, response will change based on the input so uh, you might like you know instead of get or post you might try delete or put or make or some some other weird method and see what what the response is uh, sometimes you get the three or two uh, due to protection rather than like you know just a session timeout so observe all the responses carefully it's not just like you know uh, looking at uh burp scan results or something you also need to while you are you are doing this phase one like info gathering look at all the responses and and try to build your database on what the application is doing and how the infrastructure might have been set up uh the second thing is uh, you want to do is error-based fingerprinting uh here 
uh, stack traces are always useful and especially I would see this with the dotnet application uh, even even today like you know uh, sometimes if they're using filtering it can cause the error because uh, if you try to bypass or provide something some characters which are not expected by the applications at times load balancer even VAF would throw the errors if it's not configured correctly so look at all of those error messages uh, so for example here like as you can see in the screenshot uh, we try to put the XSS payload and, and in the return you could you could see like what libraries used by the by the uh, application it was provided uh, and then now we can we can see and how we can bypass this library uh, like you know function or control to execute the cross-site scripting so uh, that there is uh, usually we don't expect this uh, errors to be displayed to the user but sometimes applications still do it and and the last thing is about the fuzzing so uh, fuzzing we, we have discussed a lot a lot of time in the in the past about the SQL injection various things so sending the random strings and in the values in the parameters like or one is equal to one for SQL injection right it might might work uh, and then you try to iterate through various different fuzzing uh, fuzzing strings uh, that again I'll, I'll show you in the future sessions but uh, that will give you different uh, results and uh, sometimes you'll get the uh, 403 because uh, the WAF is blocking cer certain payloads and, and that's where you, you can see oh, whether it is filtered or versus someone is blocking my request. Uh, uh, it's not uh, easy to do all of this manually. So obviously use like Burp Intruder, which is free and very efficient. You can also use WhatsApp. Uh, Intruder is my favorite, so I'm gonna recommend that. And you can create your list of all the uh, payloads and then like you know put them and use them uh, iteratively in, in every engagement to to figure out like fuzzing uh, fuzz the applications so uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail into this first session but in the next session we'll, we'll talk about some ASCII Unicode and and how can we use all of this to bypass certain uh, WAF rules and etc so we'll, we'll get into those details uh, so stay tuned uh, again uh, please subscribe to my channel uh, and come back I'll come back next week with the uh, second part of this uh, series and and if you have any questions I, I, in the meanwhile please drop it into the comments I'll try my best to come back and answer those questions uh, and obviously if you if you can share your experience with uh, how you have been able to detect the WAF in your uh, pen test uh, experience uh, that will be great as well so you can share with the community uh, that's all I have for this week uh, thank you so much and I'll see you guys next week bye